Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Brothers in Arms, a new way for men to talk. I am your host, comedian Edgar Rivera, and I am joined today by comedian Eric Nieves, Dr. Dan Radner, and our very special guest, man, comedian, actor, writer, Momo Rodriguez, yo. What's up, mi gente? What's up, brothers? How are you? Great to see you, Edgar, and welcome good to the to show, see you, Momo. <laughs> Sounds good, guys. You guys. You guys sound like a like a group of guys that just... Ready, we're ready to get emotional here, man. I can tell by you guys' tone, this tone of voice, your, your personality. That's it. That's what we do on here. We open up Damn. and we yeah, talk well, since things. episode since day one. That's it's it, it's been that way. Just I've been bearing my soul to these guys. I, I, I might start crying by five minutes, bro. It's really nice to meet you, Momo, and, and, and thank you so much oh, for likewise. being a part of the show. Uh, you want to tell you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself, real quick, before we get things started. Yeah, man, I'm a comedian. Uh, I've been doing this for about 15 years. Really, just did it because it was a way for me to express myself after being told from countless casting directors I didn't have that look, that heartthrob look to be an actor, or that there wasn't enough roles for me to be on TV. So I had to find a different kind of avenue, and comedy was what I chose. And comedy just kind of called itself towards me, and. Uh, Started writing, became a writer, um, and then eventually one of these, one of these um, people we meet along the way in comedy, um, gave me a little bit more confidence to, and pursue the acting career. And, and right now I'm on a TV show, and it's been just amazing to be able to express that side of me, that 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 artist in me that it's it's been trying to get out since I was a, a kid, and you know. Uh, what I love about what you guys are talking about here is that most of my art form has come through trauma or trying to find a way to 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 really talk about who I am. Is that a clown that just passed by me? Or was that noise? Did you guys hear that? I was going to say, that. listen, uh, if you're trying, <laughs> that wasn't the right sound effect. I think you pressed the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a... Well, but no, you know I mean, what? I, that's that's the reality. Okay. Well, thank you for proving people wrong, brother, and thank yeah. thank you for for being a part of this show and for being willing to be to share with us. Nice. Oh, for sure, man. I think more people, more more men need to really op be open about how they feel because, um, you know, I don't want to jump into it quick, but my character on the show that I'm on right now, he's uh, he he struggles with mental health and then uh, kind of goes into the suicidal kind of uh, um, just you know tunnel, and, and I think a lot of men because they don't have an opportunity to talk or express themselves, uh, put themselves in this category where no one will understand them or no one can can really feel what they're going through. And, and uh, I think the more we talk about it, the more we can realize that we all have these problems and we all have these moments of, of what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, I, just jumping in on that, Momo, I was going to say when you said it that who doesn't actually struggle with mental health? That, that That's actually part of what I think we should be talking about is that we all do. It is just... we, we, we all do. And men, men, we we have a way to do it where we we hide it. Um, we're not like women on that. Women will find ways to prove to you they have mental health. Don't blame it on the planets. Don't blame it on on Saturn and how it's you know in retrograde. We we you know we just we hide it, and it's because it's uh, either from how we grew up, from our parents, from our culture, mostly in my case from our culture. But nowadays, you know, it's it's seen as a weakness yeah that's true and as comedians i feel like it, it could be easier for us you know because we get on stage we joke around we we actually express ourselves where people think we're joking around but we just laying it out but we could really really hide it and that's the whole purpose of this show and it's crazy that you said that because this show came about from a suicide you know like from, you know, from something we lost someone and that's how we all here right now and and it's great man i'm, I'm happy to see you i'm happy to sure. i mean you and i met few months ago personally for the first time and we shared a very good moment and i said dude i gotta have this guy on the podcast but before we get started with that i want to ask dr dan dr dan how you doing brother how you been i'm great um you know as i always say it's a blur day to day but especially because the way i do my work i'm so in the moment with each person i'm talking to so i almost feel like there was not there's nothing other than this <laughs> like uh -huh. so when you ask me how i am i'm, I'm just here I'm I'm good. I'm happy to be here with you guys. Thanks. What about you, Eric? How how was your weekend? Well, it's good. I'm just happy to know that therapists aren't thinking about the next patient while they're talking to the current one. That just made me feel a lot better because I'd hate if I was talking to my therapist and he's like, "Man, 
I can't wait for my 430. You know no, what I mean? Listen, so. listen, this, this, is, this is a little public service <laughs> announcement for everybody. Any, any decent therapist, if they're doing the job at remotely right, it's much easier to do the job if you are focusing on the person you're with. It is so much better. So most, most of them actually are. Yeah, so listen to that therapist. But I had a, I had a good week, man, uh, except for uh, the remnants of Ida knocked out the water and the, and the elevators in my building for a while. And uh, I live on the ninth floor. And I, you don't realize how much you miss an elevator until you don't have it and you live on the ninth floor. So, um, yeah, you know. It, That's crazy, it's bro. It's been horrible. And let me tell you, you know how they see those firefighters and cops running up the stairs, you know, with their guns out and they run to the 20th floor? I can't carry my shih tzu nine flights without taking breaks on floor six. So if I was a firefighter, everybody would be dead. So, But beyond that, it, it's, I'm just waiting for my elevators to get back on. They're still out? They're still out, bro. They, wow. they might be out for another two weeks because they were submerged in water. Eric never wants to leave the house in the first place. This is in like the, the first place. Experience. So I was already a hermit in the first place. Now I don't have elevators. Are you kidding? I'm looking at the dog like, you listen, that's a toilet. You should learn because I don't <laughs> want to go downstairs no more. So I, it's hilarious, man. But I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. My, my, my weekend was good. I, I kind of like hit, and just, you know, decompress and just chill. Had a nice mellow weekend. Um, was thinking a lot about last week's episode and having Nick as our guest last week and how deep that episode was. So I've been thinking a lot about that. Excited to get into this episode now with Momo. So I think we're just going to like get right into it, man. So we won't be short on time. So Eric, you want to kick it off with some... Um, well, actually, you know what? Dr. Dan, Dr. Dan could do this. Dr. Dr. Dan, Dan, Dan always does the intro. So Momo, they, they love when I do this intro. I'm check out this, check out this intro, Momo. It's like, it's very subtle, but it's very effective. Check this out. Watch, watch him. All right. So this segment is called Old News, maybe from yesterday. <laughs> I, I don't know. For Momo, you news. judge for yourself. I don't know Momo looks unfazed. <laughs> let, let me, like, it's this. It's when he does this. He, he does All this. Right, the little, little head tilt. The, end, the little end. Mr. Yeah. Rogers head tilt. Oh, oh, news, but, maybe from uh, yesterday. We got Eric. Eric, you want to take us off on that? Just went over. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, old news is when we take a, you know, old news. Old news is never really old. It's just, you know, not as current. And uh, the news I wanted to talk about is uh, New York uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo, who recently uh, resigned. That's a fancy way of saying, you know, leave before they they fire you. And he got, of course, everyone knows he got fired. You know, he resigned because of the sexual harassment uh, claims. But in my opinion, I think he should have been out back in April when the big incident came out about the nursing home scandal. So I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but you know, at the height when the, when the COVID-19 pandemic first started, New York was really the epicenter at the start. We were, we, it was, uh, the numbers were ridiculous. And uh, Mario Cu uh, Mario's father, Andrew Cuomo actually took a uh, you know, pretty strong uh, chokehold on New York, a stronghold on New York, got control of it, got the numbers down. Uh, but one of the things he made a mistake in uh, is that he made it mandated that COVID patients that were stable, uh, nursing homes had to take them in. And as you know, nursing homes have the most vulnerable patients anywhere. Mm -hmm. So he, he'd have these patients, and he underreported the number of deaths that happened at the nursing homes by 50%, by 50%. So, I mean, it's estimated that in, during that nursing home fiasco, anywhere between 11 and 15,000 patients and workers were killed because of the policy that was enacted during that time. And if you think about it, you know, uh, nursing homes are where our grandparents and parents are. And those are the people that we want to protect the most. And that got me thinking about, you know, how does COVID affect, we all know COVID affects us all, but we don't really talk about how it affects families specifically, especially when it comes to the loss of parents. In the first year of the pandemic, it was estimated that 45,000 children lost at least one parent. And that number triples if you count caregivers like grandparents or foster parents or someone taking care of the child. And it's estimated globally that probably 2 million children are going to be orphaned or lose a caregiver globally. So when we talk about COVID, I mean, in the numbers themselves, as we know, the numbers are ridiculous. Over 660 dead. I mean, 50, over 1,500 people died on September 7th. OK, which is only a couple of days before this shoot. So the numbers themselves are stark. But we have to also think about the long term effect of COVID as it affects to the loss of parents and how these children are going to have to live without their mother, their father or both because of this pandemic. So in a way, it affects them twice. 
You know, they're losing the world as they know it, and they lost their most important caregivers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I, when I think about it, I think about we need to start thinking about how children, how we're going to help these children get through the loss of their parents during COVID. And, you know, and the, the interesting part, I didn't know this uh, gentleman, that COVID deaths, men are outnumbering women in COVID deaths. But 56% is our number. So it's estimated because of that, it's more than, it, more than the children are two to five times more likely during this pandemic to lose their father rather than their mother, which I think is also an interesting thing to think wow. about. That because of, it, 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 because of those estimates of the increase, we're 56%. We're dying at a higher rate. Our fathers are dying more than the mothers. And that's something that we're going to have to think, think about for future men because fathers are raising the men of tomorrow. And if they're not here because of COVID, it's going to affect them moving forward. I just found myself wondering, how can we understand this number? Like, what, why, why, is it, why is it higher? And people might say, oh, it's only 6% it's only above 50%. But if it goes up 6 the other goes down. So it's actually 12% above. It's... It's a there, there are some number. factors. There are some factors listed. Um, men do tend to engage in more high-risk behaviors, like not uh, hand-washing as much, not social distancing as much. So there are some behavioral factors. And another uh, medical factor I didn't know about is that I didn't know that women were better T-cell creators than men, biologically. I did not know that. And, uh, you know, I, I just learned that today. Now, T cells are the, T are the cells that fight infections in the body. If you know anything about HIV, they usually count your T cell count to see uh, how you are with the virus because T cells are the, are the cells that fight infections that are trying to enter the body. And I did not know that women were better creators of T cells than men. So there, is, so there are some minor factors there, but you can't overlook the overall number. And there are certain factors we can control. We can't control T cells. but why aren't men not washing their hands as much or engaging in higher risk behaviors? Do you think it's more because we're stubborn as men? When, we, when I say that, I mean like we don't, get, we don't get checked up as much as we should. We don't go to the hospital, you know, when we feel something. So I think it has a lot to do with how stubborn we are and not getting that annual physical, you know, well, feeling something and ignoring it. Go ahead, Dr. Uh, uh, well, I'm interested in getting Momo's take on this. I'm going to turn to you in a sec, Momo. But... Um, I, I actually think it's not necessarily that men are more stubborn than women. I think we're stubborn about different things. And, and that fits with what you're talking about, Edgar, so it doesn't contradict what you're saying. But we are, we are stubborn as a group about certain things, and that includes sharing. I'm, Momo, what's your take on all this? There's so much in there, so you can comment on I mean, any part a, of it. A lot of the people who were dying were above 50 from what I hear, and they still have that hunter-gatherer mentality. So when it came to the pandemic, I noticed there was more of the men because I was one of those guys that was out there looking for supplies. It was more of the, you know, I'll go take care of the household. I'll go out there. I'll work. You stay home with the kids. And it was a lot of the older men that passed, um, kind of like my dad's range where, you know, they still have that. Oh, it's, it's just it's just a little cold. You're going to get it. it's just sickness. They have that doubt like, I'm, you know, I'm unstoppable. I've survived, you know, recessions. I've survived so much. This little code's not going to get me. So I do think it had a lot to do with the, the generational mindset um, mm. on how they, 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 you know, they were more effective. More men were, like I said, they had that more hunter, hunter gatherer uh, uh, mentality where they wanted to go get stuff done. I mean, like anybody, I mean, we, a lot of us were around during the riots and uh, I was around during the riots in LA and my dad was out there trying to see what how to protect the house, like instead of being inside of the house. So yeah, I mean, and in my household, my dad was the first to get the the, the COVID. So I mean, I, I could see, I, I could totally see that they're the ones that were the most vulnerable. Plus, again, it goes back to not sharing your weaknesses. Um, you know, we're never going to admit as men that we can't breathe. That's, I mean, <laughs> till this day, I mean, I. I when I'm having something with my, you know, with, with, with my family, with my girl, I don't want to say that I'm sick when we're both sick. I still want to be the one that, you know what, we're both have a cold. We're at home. We're not doing anything. Let me go get the medicine. You stay home. I still want to be the man in the situation. And, and the intersexist person in me that, that 
has been passed down to generations is going to make me put myself in danger versus have her be put in danger. So, I mean, I could totally see that, that, you know, more men are more, uh, were the ones that got affected by it the most. I, I was thinking though about um, this other thing, Eric, that you said about the men of tomorrow, the boys now that are growing up now, maybe without fathers, maybe without mothers, without all these different um, caretakers. And it's a big deal. I can say as a therapist, um, and having lost my father, uh, when I, you know, shortly after I was born, I grew up in that kind of setup. And so I think about all these people and it's incredibly sad. When I think back to September 11th, for example, yeah. you know, 3000 people died there. There's that movie, uh, the King of Staten Island, um, Pete Davidson, his, it, that was, you know, he was one of those kids and you see the huge impact. And now I'm thinking, wow. During the, the height of the pandemic, and, and I know the numbers are really bad right now, again, with Delta, we're, we were having 3,000 people That's, die a day yeah. and more at times. So I think about all that loss. It's just hard to take. Oh, another thing I wanted to add, gentlemen, a couple of other factors that uh, attribute to men leading the num in the numbers. Men are more likely to smoke. To, or to be, be obese or to have other chronic conditions that would make them more susceptible uh, to dying. But it's really the, 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 option, the optional choices that concern me that, you know, as, you know, the, I mean, men, in order to support our families, we need to survive. I mean, and this is not just in the United States. In the, uh, according, uh, men died uh, middle-aged or older. Men died at a higher rate of COVID in every country in the world except South Africa, okay? So that means it's not just America. Every country in the world, men, middle-aged or older, died at a higher rate of COVID than women did. And I think Momo made an excellent point about that be, the coming from a generation where uh, it was really old school and you know there was a certain way a man had to be, uh, even portrayed in the media, there was only one way for a man to be. So that, you, know, you had to be that man. But what can men do today to you know, keep their manhood, but yet make choices <laughs> to help improve their, our health outcomes because make, there are things we your, can't control. Uh, make your wife go to CVS. <laughs> she has more T cells. You know. Yes. Yeah. Ex yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, why are women better T cell activators? Because they have I, something. I mean, they have something. Uh, that, that I, I have to more. find out. I mean, is it connected to a yeah. credit card? Uh, I don't I, understand. <laughs> I, I have a I have a hunch that is connected to evolution mm -hmm. and the fact that women need to survive to have the babies survive. That that's my guess. Exactly. But, Ooh, uh, yeah, Dr. for Dan. infection, having a baby out of you know, you know, that, that was one of the biggest things they died of infection after having a baby. You know, that's so right. that would make a lot of sense. I mean that doesn't okay. So that so then there are there are medical reasons behind it. But I just but, found out why won't a man why don't men want to wash their hands? We could we could control that. We could wash our hands. I went camping last weekend and I don't think I washed my hands once. Oh. And it was because I was camping because I, I was I was trying to survive. I was trying to set all these things up. And I think one of my one of my homies pointed out, hey man, you haven't washed your hands once while you're making the food over there. I'm like, it's cool, we're camping. It's just like I don't know. I think it's just like a survival caveman mentality that we like dirt. <laughs> We like dirt. <laughs> we, just, we just we we do a man. Listen, that, that sounds that a, that's not the name videos. of a biography. I like we dirt. Like, the Momo like dirt. story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, because I mean, even the the idea of washing your hands as a man, your hands are gonna smell like some flowery. Cause it's all soap now. It smells like flowery. And I know the want. bring back ivory soap. Yeah, bring right. You know, so you know, maybe you know, and and. We just don't like to have our hands. The only time we wash our hands really is after working on a car and it's all full of oil and you got to get that special salt. I mean, uh, the special like soap. I mean, really washing hands is not really a big deal unless we're successful. Like if you're a doctor, you learn to wash your hands. I you know? sure hope so. <laughs> you know, I, please, please. Well, Dr. Dan, you don't really need to wash your hands for therapy, right? Unless you're doing aromatherapy. Uh, listen, I don't, but I'm a little bit OCD, so I wash my hands all the time. <laughs> but it, here's here's the thing. I mean, I, I think that 
This show, I think, is important in lots of ways. That's one of the reasons that I want to do it. But one of the ways is by showing that, by, by helping people, by, by helping men, really, talk, generally speaking, we're actually protecting ourselves from things like this. It's like what Momo was saying. If you, if you grow up in an environment where men do talk, well, then maybe you're more likely to say, you know what? I'm not feeling so great. Can you run out to the drugstore? Or, you yeah. know, let's. So the fact that we're starting to talk is going to save our lives. It's, it's it, no it, joke. Yeah. It's also finances, man, because I don't talk. If I feel like I have a headache and it's not normal, I'm not going to say anything. Um, that's 150 bucks co payment to go to the emergency room, mm. you know? And as a man providing. You're not going to put your health first. You're going to put your family self first. You know, I'm not going to go spend 150 bucks so they could see what's wrong with me. I'd rather just, I, you know, Latinos, we don't go until we fall on the floor. So we're passed out. That's the only time we go to, the, to, to the, the doctor. So I could see why, you know, I don't want to go get checked. What if they're going to charge me or they're going to find something on me? It's like, crazy because we are all like that as men, I think. I think yeah. it, takes, it takes us to lose someone. You know, and, and and be like, oh my God, we just lost. You know, like Eric and I lost a very good friend to cancer, and it was crazy. I don't know how you dealt with that, Eric. But when I when I when I found out, it's like you start thinking about you. You're like, oh my God, I haven't gone and checked out. And we always say, and, and it takes to lose someone, and then be like, oh, I'm gonna get myself checked out. But then everyday life happens, and then you, oh, I'll put it tomorrow, and tomorrow become weeks, and then in months, and then you know, and then and you. If you're worst, I mean, I I was supposed to do this podcast with you guys yesterday. And yesterday I felt so bad that I just kind of like, I felt like I was about to pass out and, you know, I had a headache and then I had a, I'm like, didn't feel right. So I did what I don't do. I went to the, to the, um, urgent care, which was hell because it was the holiday the day after the holiday. So everybody was like, it was just packed. And I, you know, I, I had to like put down my garden and say, uh, I'm not doing well. I need help. And they gave ran tests. They told me, "Well, you're dehydrated," and it get, it goes back to not drinking, you, not washing your hands. Men don't drink water. Yeah, for some, we're, for some we're reason. just not a, we're not as good at taking care of ourselves. We're we're uh, maybe we're looking for you know, our moms to come back. In. I mean, they it, it, they say is, that bro. they say that women are more mature than men, and I used to get offended by that when I was when I was younger. But I've I've really come to see that in lots of ways it's true. Um, <laughs> I agree. And, I I agree, and and it was my fault. I should have drank more water. I felt like crap. I'm taking this blood pressure medication. My potassium was low. You know, I just my mentality is I go to the doctor. He fixes everything. I'm out. I'm good. You know, I I've never thought I had to like keep track of what was wrong with me. You know, I thought that was their job. You know, but that was just me like thinking. You know, we always try to put a make an enemy of the person trying to help us, and and in this case was the doctor. So you know, now now I know what I'm doing. That's an interesting point, right, Doctor Dan? We always try to make enemy of the people who are trying to help us. Oh, I have I have some experience with that. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar. Very but it is true, and I I think it's because we push people away about vulnerability. Actually, I'm thinking I'm thinking about what's what's ahead <laughs> here in this episode, and. Uh, Edgar, have you briefed Momo on like what walking the walk is? Which because that's going to come up next, but we're going to do a light break before that. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I told him about it. Um, I'm actually looking forward to Momo's walking the walk. And yeah, I think um this conversation was good. And at the end of the day, fellas, man, listen, wash your hands, sanitize yourself. You know, take care of yourself. If you don't There's feel no good, shame. what's the point? What's the point of lying to the world and lying to? mostly to yourself because that's what you're lying to you're lying to yourself when you don't open up and talk and that's why we're here just not yeah. talk about what we're feeling and what's bothering us but at the same time being truly honest and connected with ourselves with our emotions and everything else so if you don't feel good and you're having a hard time with something it doesn't take away from your manhood to for you to open up and say yo i, I, I need help you know what i'm saying and at the end of the day those numbers are crazy eric those numbers are very very crazy and yeah, we need to take care of ourselves, brothers, more and oh, more. And, and Momo, the most important thing you provide to your family is you. And exactly. so, you know, your, your health is very important because without your health, everything else is secondary. And I'm sure I, I don't even know your family, but I bet your family would agree with that statement. So I just want to throw oh, yeah. that out there. No, for sure. They've been they've been yelling at me all week. Oh. <laughs> and yes. Bo, listen, my wife got a trick, bro. She, she buys a bunch of beer bottles, empties them out. 
and then and then puts in water and puts in coloring so it looks like beer. <laughs> and then I, 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 man, I have had so much water. The past, I've lost like ten pounds just off water. So that's the lengths women have to go to. to take I'm it nice. worked, and all of a sudden, like this beer is awesome, and I, I wake up no hangover. Try it. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> all right, cool, man. Listen, moving forward, um, I want to do a breaking the mold. I really do because I think um, we could break this, you know, deep conversation and, and break the mold. Mold, mold to us is like. We got to show every man out there that we're all different. We all know how to do different things. We all don't know the same things. You, the, the, got, these guys will tell you, I don't know shit about sports. I don't know. I don't care Nothing. about sports. I watch Nothing. it, but I don't care about it. So um, last episode, we had this question. And I think I'll ask you the same question, Momo, to start it off. Um, do you watch romantic um, flicks? I watch them every day. And... <laughs> and, uh, and um, I think that's because I'm a writer, but I think also it's because, you know, you have to believe in that type of magic um, in the world in order to create your own. Nice. Wow, that is a fantastic. Wow. I, I think we might have to retire the segment after. <laughs> yeah, listen, that's a that's a drop the mic moment right there. That, that's, 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 but I never thought about that. But that is that is that is very true. If you if you want to if you're going to create something like that, you first of all have to believe that it exists in some. I think I think Einstein said it best. He said, "If you want your children to be smarter, uh, read them fairy tales." Mm-hmm. You know, I mean that's. You know, fairy tales, they help they help us expand our mind. They help us create something, even if it's not real. The ability to create something real is beautiful because you can go on to different avenues that no one ever went through. And that's when great things are invented, you know, especially in romance. I mean, I think for a guy watching a, a, a romantic flick like this helps him um, prepare for whatever comes up his way from having a daughter to you know having a relationship to dealing with his son's future relationships on what to say to him i mean i mean i think it's just like a great playbook for a man is to watch these movies i mean it also it introduces it introduces boys to the idea that this might be something you'd want if you don't if it's not introduced to it at all you may not even know what's out there but so it does allow us to dream it's like um it's like we get a lot of female viewers it's crazy you know we do this podcast not not that they can't watch, but we do this podcast dedicated to men so we could, you know, get to know each other better and talk more. But we get a lot of female viewers and they're doing exactly the same thing that you're doing, you know? Like they, they're looking at us to see if they could probably understand their man a little bit better, you know? So with that being which said, the favorite, which what, is the favorite movie? There you go. What, I was the favorite. <laughs> I want, oh, man, I want to hear to the, be, or at least maybe to a be, top five. To be honest with you, I have a few top five. My, I was going when Harry met Sally. Uh, one of my favorites, um, Sleepless in Seattle, of course. And uh, I mean, I love Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. So I'm going to go with You Got Mail because I love the back and forth in that one. Um, you know, I think just anything that, that involves the, the the friend story where they start off as friends and then they become a couple, but they go through each other's like drama one of my favorite ro- romance movies that no one would think it's romance was tombstone oh love i mean it. wild uh you know uh wider and and you know kate i mean not kate i'm sorry the the girl he was with i was forget her name they had a it was kind of a romantic thing going on there i mean the, the fact that he wanted her because he was in love with what she represented and what she was you know he he didn't know he wanted that she brought out more of, of him she brought out the the person he wanted to be you know we see that movie we see a bunch of cowboys shooting each other i see a a, a romance i see the romance he had with his friend uh doc holiday the, the the friendship they had that's romantic i mean to me that's a romantic comedy so i think uh those are probably my top movies They're also good fellows there's romance in good fellows believe it or not yeah you know what's one of my favorites man for the love of the game Put it over the game. Really? Uh, yeah, dude. And it's a baseball. I thought movie. I was the only person that. Yeah, I know it's Kelly Preston in that movie. Yeah, yes. and uh, I love it. Well, Great movie. John That's C. Cool. Riley played the catcher. J.K. Simmons played the manager. Detroit against I New guess, York. I, I, when I watch these movies, man, you always we always try to put ourselves in these movies, you know. So it's very yeah. hard to find a movie that could actually relate to your lifestyle 
And for the love of the game, the way they're mad, their ups and downs, their arguments, like you could start seeing when the dude was like, man, you're messing up. What's wrong with you? She's great. And you see all that, all that action. And it's like, damn, this shit looks like my life. You know what I'm saying? So that's breaking the mold. And honestly, I was thinking about this, fellas. I want you to know, answer me if you, you feel like, if you agree with me. I, I break the mold by going to the nail salon and getting my, my hands and feet done. Eric, do you do Manny and Petty's? Uh, I do not. Um, Boom. I, I, I just, I, for, cause I was un, until recently, I was a nail biter. A nail biter. What about you, Dr. Yeah. Dan? Do you do Manny and Petty? I have never done either. Um, and, but you know what's, you know, what's funny. It's not because I'm like all like, no, I'm a man and I wouldn't do that. It's actually because I've heard you can get like fungal infections and I'm like, I don't want to go near that. So it's yeah, actually the. I just, the, I, I, just I, I just ate all of mine. I just ate all of mine. You ate all your What about you, Momo? Do you go get Manny and Petty? Oh, yeah, yeah I, I've done them in the past. I mean, I so, sometimes when I'm on the road and I'm in a city and I got nothing to do and there's a nail salon in front of my hotel room, hey, man, yeah, you, I, you know, why not? You know, I like to feel a little good. I like to, to feel taken care of. You know, I mean, it's it just feels like uh, nice. some human. Yeah, you, see, you understand why women love it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah. But that's a break in the mold because that's a conversation that you don't bring up to your boys. You well, know? Momo. You know, with the boys. Yo, today I got a badass man here. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I actually brought that into my friends, my, my, my group of friends. I actually introduced it to them because they were like, I can't believe we're doing that. And I made it. I opened up the conversation. And I said, you know what? Cast the first stone. You know, like, you know, you know come with me. And I took one of my friends and we were, we had a great time. The, what we loved was how well they treated us. What we hated was how expensive it was <laughs> right? and how they but were treating us. Nails. Why well, how much, how much, how much, how much do you pay? How Man, much does it cost? I pay, I, one day I spent $75 and I was like, dude, I just came for them to trim a nail. But $75, she sold me all these things. I, I'm going to put a gel on there that takes away this and, Another one that makes your toes gl uh, glisten. I'm out, you know, whatever. Because you don't see how to say no. As a man, you're like, oh, yeah, I want my I'm, dad. Yeah, I'm just happy as a woman touching my feet. Yeah. So I'm uh, like, hey. Okay, okay. That, not, that I can see. Now, Momo, is there anything that you do? Like, Edgar doesn't know sports, and I can't fix anything. And Dan is is it doesn't know hip-hop from the 90s. Is there uh, no, anything? That's the only time I know hip-hop. It's the only I know, time. I don't know, I know any other. <laughs> is is there something that you do uh, a, a behavior a habit that wouldn't be considered uh, a stereotypical male att attribute like something that man. you do that breaks the mold that's unique to you i think it's a lot of things man i love making cakes i love uh you know i'm into baking i'm into like cleaning certain things uh, uh scrapbooking painting uh certain you know furniture like i am I know, and you know, my chick, she loves basketball, but I don't understand basketball that much. You know, like I don't, I'm not really into it, but she is like obsessed, and I'm more like, let's go to a play kind of guy, and she's like, let's go to a game. <laughs> you know, no, I'm, I'm well, just, I, I'm just artsy, and that's how I grew up, and I like to dance, I like dancing, music, I like the opera, I like going to see symphonies play. I mean, I'm that guy. Nice. Nice. You know, I, I think when it comes down to it, you know, if you if we're limiting ourselves from things that we might enjoy just because you're not supposed to do it as a man, that is yeah. truly silly. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree, because if I would have never found out how many different types of cheese there is at a restaurant, I don't know what I would do with myself. I mean, <laughs> the, the, you know, it's just I'm not a beer guy either. I'm not going to go have a beer. I'll go have a nice wine. You know, I'll have a fruity cocktail. You know, it's dude, is it that bad to have a pina colada versus a, a scotch? No, it's better. It's a better. pina colada I mean, is delicious. Colada, exactly. It, it's just, you know, I think breaking breaking those molds is important for any man to to um to get to have to go through because you know you're gonna your your mold that you're breaking is going to be that mold that's gonna inspire your 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 nephew your your daughter your son mm -hmm. i mean you know i mean they talk so much about gender roles and how we tend to give them to each other i, I just do whatever feels right 
Yeah. You know, if you like if you like the ballet, go to the ballet. I love the ballet. I don't know why I like the ballet. Maybe I maybe I have this thing where I want to be. I wish I could be that light on my feet. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm into it. Momo That's shattered the mold today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Momo didn't it. just break it. He slam dunked it. That is it, man. Momo, that was, that's awesome, brother. That is awesome. Going back to the Manny and Petty real quick. Um, I remember in the beginning when I first started, it had to be one of those things that you do with a girl. No, you know, I wouldn't walk in there by myself. Like, it, just, just as a man. As a man, you know, because I see how your boys talk about it. But then I started going, and then what really got me into it was I saw my father's feet. And I was like, holy oh, man, no way, <laughs> you know? There. And my father was that dude, like, no, it's a cure. no, you're crazy. And then I saw his feet and I was like, oh man, I, you know what? At least once a month, I, I gotta get out there. And that's how I break the mold. Um, fellas, man, brothers listening, if you're watching this right now, man, please comment down below. Tell me how you break the mold, man. And last week we had Scotty, let me give him a big fat shout out because he commented and he said he put radiator, uh, he put on uh, washer fluid in his radiator. You know, which I thought it was brilliant because he cleaned it all out. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Scotty, for commenting, man. Um, thank you for tuning in to this segment. And and please comment down below on how you break them all and how you're different. Now, moving forward. Oh, well, that's a great idea. You, you said going by yourself? Yes. Versus going with the woman, right? No, no, no. I would go in the beginning. I would go with her. Just, yeah. And, and, you know, and you were like, oh, my God, like you act like you with her, you know, because then you know, that looks kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. because then people look at you like, oh, my God, look, she got a nice friend. But that's, you know what I'm saying? But it, at first I started out with her and then eventually I started like, I, I don't care now. Like, just like you, when 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 I'm somewhere and I see a nail salon, yo, why not treat myself? Why women do this two, three times a month and they treat themselves as expensive as it is? And, you know, but why can't we do that? Why can't we as men? Take care of ourselves but, and not be embarrassed about it. You know? But now that you know what they do at these places, and have you ever been with this woman, any woman, and you look at her feet and you're like, ugh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you need know, a new person. I go. I, go <laughs> I, I know there. somebody that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on. Come you gotta, on. I'm a man. What's your excuse? <laughs> exactly. And then I love that you said that, you know, now you, you go by yourself, which is great because when I went, I was with the woman the first time, and then 150 bucks later, I was like, nah, I'm going to leave her home. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm pampering myself, man. Yeah, yeah. That's great, brother. Thank you for that, for that story, and um, thank you for bringing the mold with us. Now we're going to move it right along to the most serious topic of this whole show, the, the walking the walk, Momo. And I, I explained to you briefly, walking the walk. It's a, it's a chance for us. We can't come on here and tell men that it's okay to talk, tell, encourage them to talk, to let things out if we don't practice what we preach, you know? So when we yeah. started, we did it by ourselves and then we, we all walked the walk. And walking the walk is basically, bro, to, uh, opening up, you know, on something that's either bothering you right now that has bothered you in the past or something that you just want to let out and, and feel free to let out, let it all out, do cry, do what you have to. Because at the end of the day, there's no judgment here, man. And... With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Momo Rodriguez walks the well, walk. I, I love the idea of walking the walk because, you know, in, in my type of, of industry, you know, you would know being comedians, we try to be as open as we can on stage. And we try to be as open as we can in order to show people our vulnerability, our likability, and have a connection with people. But a lot of the times we hide the hard feelings that come out. You know, I suffered a loss in January. I lost my mom to COVID. And it was during one of the most craziest times of my life. In the 15 years of being in the industry, I have never had a role on television. And I was given this TV role, you know, that was seven episodes on a network, on two networks. And... It was something that my mom saw me struggle for so many years to get. I mean, you know, we all have our moms and they're our number one fans, no matter what. They're going to be our number one fans. So when I got the part, she was there for the beginning of it. And towards the end, when I lost her, I did not know how to mourn. I was so disappointed in her. But not because she got sick or not the whole... But I was just like, you know, your mom tells you she's going to be around forever. She tells you she's going to be there, you know. 
And to lose her at that moment of my life when things are just beautiful is kind of like one of those moments where like, I was questioning God. I was questioning people around us. I was questioning friendships. And as much as people try to tell me, you know, hey, we understand you, you, you did it. You know, you couldn't because uh, it was my loss, not yours. So what I did, and I went against pretty much everything I'd ever thought I would do. I tried to forget her. I didn't mourn. When when she passed, you know, I had my moments of crying. I saw my dad. I couldn't even look him in the, in the eyes. I I had a moment of just nonstop crying. I found ways to honor her, but it was just the proper mourning. How can you give somebody only a day of crying when they were with you your whole life? Someone that devoted their whole life to you, how can you only just give them a day of crying? But I did. I, I couldn't cry anymore. I was focused on what she did, which was supporting me my whole life. So I'm on set and I'm about to shoot a scene. And I say to myself on set, you are no longer Momo. Momo is not allowed to mourn right now. Momo does not exist. All that exists is this character, Steve, that I'm portraying. So for two months, I was this guy. I... I was a method actor. I forgot about my mom. I forgot about Momo because I didn't want to deal with Momo. I didn't want to. I didn't want to hear Momo's cries. I didn't want to visualize Momo's feelings or anything. And then uh, I had to do a scene. And for those of you who haven't seen the show, I'm sorry. I'm going to totally give the show away. What happens in the show after seven episodes? I have to do a scene where I commit suicide. No one kills me on this show. I kill myself. That was the most emotional day of my life because, and if you see that episode, you'll see in my eyes, I was not killing myself. I was killing the character Steve because I knew once I pulled the trigger, I had to go back to Momo and I had to go back to morning. Steve was going to be dead. My job would have been done. And now I had to deal with who I was and I wasn't ready for that. During that scene, it took eight hours to shoot. I started visualizing my mom on set, smiling at me. And that gave me this amazing emotion. And, you know, I was trying to hide it as much as I can. So I try to forget about it. Now, my character is based on the best friend of the director and writer of the show, Mayans. Right when I was about to shoot that scene, I asked the director, what do you want to say to me? before I you lose me again. I wanted him to also go through my mourning. I wanted to give him closure because I was about to go into a whole nother episode of mourning. In those tears, I found a little piece of mourning. Um, I did the scene. I'm done. And I don't remember talking to anybody for like about two days. I was so happy to have you know not mourned her I thought I was done I thought you know what I went through the worst it wasn't man the worst came pictures uh, in my mind not even around the house emotions everything reminded me of my mom and after a few moments of just breaking down every other day I realized that I need to honor her by moving forward but no one teaches us how to mourn. You know, we'll hear the set. We'll, we'll hear what everybody tells us. Hey, you know, be strong. Uh, it's gonna be okay. Those are the worst things to hear when you're when you're going through somebody you lost. You know, because no one's. You know, it's not gonna be okay. Uh, you know, you you can't be strong. You don't need to be strong. You gotta be. You gotta be open. You gotta let people. You gotta, you gotta people know how much somebody meant to you. That's your way. And now, um, eight months later, um, I feel like I still haven't properly mourned. And I think it's not going to happen until I'm, I'm a whole year away from her. You know, that's when it's going to come. So lately, I've been preparing myself for that time of mourning. Anybody out there who's going through a loss like this, um, 
what I could tell you is that you mourned at your time. You mourned the way you need to mourn. And you honor them the way you need to honor them because no one's going to, there's no booklet for this. There's no pamphlet. You can watch as many movies. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where I have started to talk about it on stage. And then I, I think that's the way that I'm going to mourn her. Um, all my new goals, all my new perspectives, all my new writings have a little bit of her in them. So that's going to be my way. And I hope it's the best way to get it out of me. Um, and I also hope it's the best way to, to show others, you know, um, it is a process and there's, there's no easy um, answers or there's no easy method to, to go through it. You know, I, I do feel for those who know what I'm going through, you know, um, we talked about this when we we're at the club at the haha, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the worst club to be part of, but it's the club that, you know, eventually we're all going to be in. Eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, all aside right. from that, I just stop. I got to stop eating sugar. But aside from all that, <laughs> that's pretty much well, what's going on. Let, right now. let me. I let me. Dr. Go ahead, Doctor. Yeah, I was going to jump in about the concept of mourning and Momo. I I could really relate to a lot of what you were saying in a particular way. Um, I mentioned this before. My, my father died when I was six weeks old. I never had any proper chance to mourn him. I didn't even know him. But interestingly, I still had to go through a mourning process. And I think this is something that people need to understand. Is you, you might mourn at different times, different parts of things. Yeah. But the, and there's a big difference between mourning and being sad. A and, you know, being sad is... is can have its uses and of course makes sense, but mourning is about grappling with the reality of it. Mm -hmm. And I hear that you, uh, there's something that I, I felt really good about in hearing how you did it. You, you let yourself do it your way. And that's what ever to me, that's what everybody who's mourning really needs to hear. There is just like we said, there's no manual. You're not going to know how to get through it. But if you listen to you, and you follow what you need at given moments, you will get there. I don't know if that resonates with you, Momo, but that's that's what I was thinking it's, as you were it's, talking. It's exactly what it is. I mean, I, you know, people would send me, uh, you know, messages, articles. They'll send me quotes, and it's like, thank you so much. It means so much to me that you're doing this to, for me, but it's not helping me. That's not. I mean, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm a marketing major. I'm that guy who writes bullshit for a living. So when people email me bullshit and send me bullshit quotes, I'm like, yeah, my fuck, like this is this is what I sell to people, but it's not gonna help me. You can't, you can't, you know, a bullshitter is a bullshitter. So it's not gonna help me because I know this was written to have to to give me some kind of ease. But I, the reality is, my mom was the same person I was, and even when people were sending me things to mourn with, I would laugh and say, my mom's probably gonna kick out of this. Like she's probably laughing at how people are trying to help me, and she's right there laughing like they're not helping you, huh? Because she was the same way. You're not gonna tell her, "Be strong, it's gonna be okay." Mama would be like, cuss you out and say, "How is this gonna? How how would I be strong?" And I think no, that's what I was going to do. I I think it's more helpful in in a backward sort of way, paradoxically to what people would expect. It's yeah, you're better off being with somebody in mourning by recognizing that it is not going to be okay. Yeah, that. This is a tragic and irreversible thing that just it like body slams your soul. I mean, we say to people, and I'll be honest, I say this to people all the time when I don't want to hear their bullshit. I'm like, hey, just be strong. It's going to be okay. And you're like, it's not going to be okay. This guy is screwed. But you say that because you don't want to have a conversation with the guy. Mm -hmm. You know, right. I mean, right. a lot of my friends are going through breakups they go through a breakup and they're like, yeah, man, I miss her. I'm like, oh, don't worry. You're going to be better. I go home. He's not going to be good for a while. I mean, it's just something we, we, we as humans love to lie to people to make them feel good. And I felt everybody was lying to me to make me feel good too. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll let them tell me what they're going to tell me, but I'm going to do this my way. And I don't know what it's going to be. And, and that's what this journey has been. 
uh, my mother's death has been a journey. I never thought I would say it like that, but it's it's a journey that uh, it's going to lead me to somewhere. Much like every ending has a beautiful beginning, and I think her ending has begun a new phase in my life, either to 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 go a certain direction or to remain stuck and feel, you know, that she's going to come back one day. What do I know she's not? Right. Well, and the irony is people may say those things to make you feel better, but as you know, it doesn't make you feel better. But really, interestingly, when people do say, like, this is bad, <laughs> when they yeah. when they validate it, you you feel like they're with you. Actually, I was thinking about another romantic comedy that I love is About a Boy. I love I right. love that movie. Uh, and there's a scene in it where the kid is telling Hugh Grant all his problems, and Hugh Grant is like the least you know, possible guy to, yeah. to yeah. helping you. And he just goes, fuck. And that's what made the kid feel better. Like in a way, that's what you're talking about. You just want someone to react. People usually lie because uh, they're feeling uncomfortable. I mentioned this before when people say, Oh, it's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. You know, it's because I think nine times out of 10, they don't want to hear it anymore. It, and they just want to make themselves feel better and get themselves out of they the conversation. Distance themselves. Yeah, Exactly. You know, um, Momo, I wanted to ask you, uh, because the timing, you know, of you starting this role uh, on the show and congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, how much how much worse do you think it would have been if you didn't have the show to go to and force yourself into that role instead of just having to live in the moment? How much worse do you think it would have been for you? Or do you even think about that? I think I think about it every day. I think I think it would have been one of those things where I would have to be the face of the family. And because I was working on the show, my sisters and my dad kind of took over that. And I'm the kind of the one that kind of just starts taking initiative on things. But, you know, I believe I would have been there to, to make more decisions. And I think that would have got me more uh, confused on how to mourn. It would have also made me feel more depressed, like, what have I done, you know, while she was alive? I think the idea that the fact that I was on a show made me feel like, well, at least she got to see me succeed in one way. And I think I would have felt worse because now it's like, wow, she's gone and she never got to see me do a show. So, I mean, I've told the cast, which, by the way, the cast and the people of my and MC and FX and Disney were just wonderful with me. They were just supportive. You know, they were the ones there saying it's going to be okay. And some of them were not. Some of them were like, this is a tough situation. And they stood by me. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, not to get all holy in here, but it's crazy how God does these things and, and the timing he has for these things. Uh, sometimes you are being put in a position uh, at the same time where amazing people are around you to go through it. And even though they might not know what to say, just them being there, just being present helps you find a, a, a downbeat to get back to where you need to be. Well, you know, Momo, um, you know, I mean, we clicked right away because we both found out that we both lost our mother. So yeah. hearing you talk right now just sets me back to an emotion where I'm holding it back where I'm like, I'm thinking about my time and and I do understand what you're talking about, how you get all these people, because I shut down the same way. You know, when I when I lost my mom, it was in the very beginning. And even if I wanted to fly and be there with her, I couldn't because I was already out of commission. I had gone for surgery and everything else. But it, it's crazy because you get all the people that tell you all the bullshit, you know. And then to me, what helped me the most were the people who just listen. Yeah. I don't want to hear. You, you can never fix this, dude. You can never fix how I'm feeling. Um, when I was talking to you and I met you at the haha, ha and this just a couple of months ago, I, and you could tell the guys, I came right to them, and I'm like, dude, I want to have this guy on my show. Because if you go back to episode two, I talk my, I do my walk in the walk on, on my mom. And, you know, when I met you that night, here we are, two, two men, never met each other. We started a conversation. I, I told you I lost my mom. You're like, I lost mine. And, and, and my eyes got watery and I saw your eyes got watery and I said, this dude really, it's really connected with his emotions. You know what I'm saying? For two people to meet like that, that conversation meant a lot yeah. to me. And that's the reason you're here right now. You know, um, I'm sorry that you're going through it. Eric did bring up a good question by 
by the character that you were playing because I saw another interview that you did and you said that you mourn through that character, which is very interesting, you know? So it's crazy how, yeah, you mourn through that character, but then when that character got taken away, now you're slapped in the face of reality. With, yeah. with me, I, I lost my mom April 17th of last year. So we had to wait a whole year to lay her to rest, you know? And yeah. we just buried her this April that just passed. And I thought I had finished mourning. In my mind, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm always going to cry. I'm always going to let it out. And I don't hold it back. It doesn't take nothing away from me. I say to all the viewers, just because you cry doesn't mean you're less of a man. If I feel it, I let them out. But it was very hard when I thought I had already moved forward. And now here we go on April 17th of this year. And we had to relive that whole moment of finally letting mommy, resting mommy down to, you know, in peace. And... Yeah. And it hit me. It hit me very, very hard. Just like you, I think about the conversations that I, I didn't pick up because I was in the middle of something and I'd be like, I'll call her back. You know, the fact that she used to call me all the time when I was out here, when I was at sea working on cruise, she knew I couldn't pick up my phone, but she called me every single day and left me the same message. And I have all those messages in my phone. And now hearing them, I'm like, damn, you know, you, you question everything. But I I admire what you did. I admire how you took that character and, and 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 it's a beautiful thing. Honestly, I have not watched the show. And even though I know the ending to the character, I am so looking forward to seeing the show because it's like you said, I I now I want to see how this ending came about. Um you know the sad, strong. sad the sad part about COVID, I mean there's so many sad parts about COVID, but one of the sad parts is that it's robbing people the chance to grieve properly in a certain way because we we, we haven't been able to lay our, our, our people down to rest. Mm -hmm. and, that's a, and that's a big part of the, the grieving process, at least, you know, historically, especially in Latino families. We, you know, we, 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 we lay our people down, we get together. Yeah. And just the, the impact of not being able to get together as a family and honor the loss of our loved ones. My, my wife lost her mother to COVID uh, mm -hmm. not, too, not too long uh, distance of time from when Edgar lost his mom. And I think the hardest part initially was that she couldn't lay her down. And I think yeah. I just feel bad for all the families that were just robbed of that of that opportunity to say goodbye in a proper way. Oh, yeah. I mean, we we, we they were giving us which, by the way, they didn't give it a cheaper price. You would think they took away mm. half of the services they provide, but it was the same price wow. so for the for a ceremony. They gave us 10 minutes for the viewing and it was only eight of us allowed to be in the room. Mm. So 10 minutes, say goodbye, and then that's it. And then the funeral, they didn't want people around. They wanted a quick, of course, a bunch of Mexicans that we already broke some rules. I show up with mariachis. I went crazy. We give speeches. We went the whole way. Because one thing of a, of a Mexican mom, Mexican moms are known for telling you what they wanted when they died. You know, or when I die, you better do this. When I die, you, I want this. You know, don't let that lady come to my funeral. Fuck that lady. You know, stuff like that that my mom would tell us. You know, and and I had to do it, man. I had to, I had to give, give her that part. And a lot of the families weren't even given the opportunity to see <clears throat> their loved ones in the viewing, or they had drive-by funerals. You know, it it, it was a uh, really difficult time and and I, I mean jokingly the other day i told my family sometimes i wish we'd give mom like a second funeral like you know a real one because mm -hmm. i felt like the one we gave her was such a half-assed funeral because we weren't allowed to do anything else i mean you know it's she's the matriarch you got you, you gotta send her away in the way she deserved to be sent but when the whole world is in in so much pain it's it's a little harder to be selfish to get what you want, you know, because at the end of the day, you got to be make sure everybody else is safe. And, and uh, yeah, man, I think every, all of us uh, 20 years from now are going to look back at this moment and uh, unfortunately have the, 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 you know, the opportunity to say that, yeah, we lost somebody in the great pandemic uh -huh. and this is how bad it was. Well, Momo, I'm, I'm, uh course so sorry for your loss and i know those are essentially they're they're the kind of empty words that people say i don't mean them in an empty way but what i think might be useful for us to highlight here is 
the words that are said when you are with someone. So even yeah. though I'm saying I'm sorry that happened to you, I think what's more important is I'm actually here. And it's like what no. Eric, it's like what Eric said. If we cannot be afraid of the moment and we're we're okay connecting, we're here together. Yes. That's what we can give. No, I, I think that's the best thing is to have a conversation. A lot of people uh, avoided me. The closest people that I was always with avoided me for a while because they didn't have the words. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand because I'm, I'm, I could be the same way sometimes. And the people that had the words were the people I least expected. And I did appreciate them having those words with me at the time. Yeah, You know, yeah, some people would send me like, I, I would put on Instagram, I lost my mom today, run a whole thing out, and then I would get back like a little emoji with with the, a sad face. And that was their way to connecting back with me, which, you know, maybe that's their way, but it was sometimes it's like, I don't want to see that. Like, that's it. You know, my mom's memory, and all you're going to do is send me back a little smiley face crying. Well, and it's also, it's like it's like what, what Edgar said. Um and for those people out there, you need to know, you don't have to have the words. Sometimes it's yeah. not what you say. It's about not running from the moment. You know, you, you stay there with them. Uh, listen, we talk about the importance of talking, and that is important. But it's also talking when you don't say a word, but you stay there. Yeah, just stay there. Sometimes you just want someone in the room to look at, and maybe they won't even acknowledge you. Right. But the yeah, idea, they're, they're not alone. You know, that's, that's what counts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and as a man, you know, I tell people, I tell all the men, all the viewers and everybody else, yeah, talk, talk it out. But then now I'm talking to the men who are the other end. Just listen. Dude, just listen. You know, listen. like I'm not telling you my problems so you could tell me how to solve my problems. Just, just because you tell me it's going to be all right, it's not going to solve my problems. But at the yeah. end of the day, all we have to do is listen and, and, and pay attention to it. See when another man is trying to seek for help. And instead of being that man and that macho and brush it off, be the listener. Be that man. Be be a be a brother to another brother. You know what I'm cry saying? Cry with cry with I mean, I, I want to give thanks to all, all of my um my close friends that when this happened, they were there and they cried with me. Mm -hmm. To be in the room with friends that cried with me, I mean, these guys are my best friends, and to see their tears for my mom was just beautiful to me and you know we're we're tough dudes we grew up in a really bad neighborhood we've been through some things together but when you know i see them with their eyes red crying tears for my mom crying with me that was a big thing for me and a lot of i think we got closer because you know we think about our own moms you know they all thought about their own moms and they even told me like i'm glad we have this friendship because i know when it comes when in my day comes with my mom you're going to be around. I mean, we all, for the first time, my five core friends had that conversation. We had the death conversation. To, to see them, each of them, bring a big old arrangement of flowers with all five of their names on it meant so much to me to see my guys go through it. And, you know, it's sad that it took, you know, a loss of one of our parents for us to cry in front of each other. Um, I just, you know wish we were more open with our hearts and i think it's you know it is tough it is tough to show vulnerability to any anybody especially to, to other men that you know you're known to telling these stories about your 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 you know your uh conquest and all things that you do but i think I, uh the best and most beautiful thing is to shed a tear with somebody um i could i have this mentor of mine i have a few mentors but Every mentor that right now I have has cried in front of me. And that makes me love them more. Um, I even tell you some of their names. Emilio Rivera, actor. He's on that show Minds. He's been on Sons of Anarchy. He's in so many movies. Also a comedian. Um, he once told me, we were at his house, and he told me the story about uh, his brother that he lost. And he's crying. And he's like, I told him, I love that fact that you that vulnerable with me. And he told me, you know what? For so many years, Momo, I was always told that crying was a weakness. Mm. And I realized it, it makes me more of a man. And I admired him doing that. Uh, George Lopez, we shared some tears together. You know, I mean, these are guys I look up to and, and uh, they let it out. And I, I think every man, 
as weird as it sounds to hear this, let it out, man. Let's let it out because you you keep it in, it'll kill you from the inside. Yeah. It no can one... cause, you know, it'll it will cause even even uh, 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 health problems. Oh, well, know. now you're really talking my language. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a mind body doctor <laughs> of psychology, and I know it, mm-hmm. it it will eat you alive, and it'll cause all kinds of symptoms and serious problems yeah i mean i had i had a lot of uh, uh i had palsy uh six cranial nerve palsy when after my mom died because i was holding in a yeah, lot of the right. thing you know i was uh my nerves were just everywhere and, and uh you know I, I was feeling anxiety like crazy and I, they were like why are you why are you having anxiety attacks i don't know i'm just having them you know i i never saw the morning as a as something was wrong with me and uh the more open I am now, the less anxiety I have. That's true. You know, I tell people the more you open up. For me, one thing that I gained and I learned from mom passing was that for the first time in my life, I didn't have to hide the tears. You know, the tears were there, and everybody knew the reason. So I appreciated the fact that I got to connect with my emotions more, and and and, and even moving forward, like. Like you said, sometimes we we cry, we hide it. You don't you don't want to go up to your boys and be like, "Yo, my dude, I'm crying." You know what I'm saying? But to me, and 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 one way I would take her, you know, and take that that lesson is that you know what? Don't don't hide that shit, bro. You know, I don't don't know. hide it. I, I I'm not I'm not afraid of what you think of me. Even on the second episode when I cried, as I talked about my mom and not crying like I might be like, <gasps> but like the tears are coming down. I, at first I was like, oh my God, what are people going to think? And then I said, I don't really care because at the end of the day, I feel better. And that's the reason we are all here today. You know, thank you for Momo, Momo for sharing that. Thank, thank you, Momo. For opening up with us, brother. This no, is for sure. Exactly thank- what I was talking about. And I want thank the you for viewer- letting me. Yeah, thank you. And I want the viewer to know that I, I met Momo and I knew Momo, but Momo didn't know Eric and Momo didn't know Dr. Dan. And, and you know what? It's, it's that easy, brother. It's that easy just to open up and just whatever, man. What Fuck, fuck the judgment. You know what I'm saying? Right. At the end of the day, it's just what makes you feel good. And that's why we are all here today, man. Um, I want to thank you, Momo. I hope uh, a lot of a lot of people out there who are suffering just like we are because I feel like it's never going to be ending. There's days that I wake up and I just I can't stop crying because I'm thinking about her so crazy. But then it makes me appreciate her even more moving forward. And at the end of the day, brothers, um, thank you. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for seeing this vision with me. And I hope that just one person sees this and feels better about themselves. That's all I, I you know. Just I, I hope so, person. too. One and, of the and make sure that, you know, honestly, one thing I have to say to everybody out there is um, I I had to become somebody for this show. Everybody on the show is a method actor, and they're, an amazing, they're amazing actors. And I really had to cry in front of them to feel that emotion. And if I didn't learn to put my guard down, I don't think I would have been right for the role. The tears on that show that I had were real, and everybody in the in the audience, everybody in the show, knew those were real tears. And now every tear that I have, I appreciate it because it means something. Um, and it's okay to have tears mean something. They're not a sign of weakness. They're a sign of greatness that you have to be able to put your stuff out there for someone, something, or a belief. So cry because it is the only emotion that really can free us that our body can create thank you brother thank you and just know that just because we did this episode today doesn't mean we're never going to hear from you again if you ever have a question for either of us you know know that i'm, I'm a big cry baby bro I'll call you all the time <laughs> whenever you want to talk whenever you want to vent out dr dan will always be here you will be um our second guest and a, and a very special one. Thank you. Like I said, thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you to everyone tuning in, viewing all the comments, all the feedback. I appreciate everything. If you feel that you know someone in your life that could take from these conversations that we have here as men, please share. That's all I care is share. This is not, I'm not here for my fame. I'm not here for my followers. I'm here because I truly believe that if we open up more brothers, we will live a better life and, and be better people. So thank you, Momo. Thank you, Eric. And Dr. Dan, I want you to take us out like you always do every night, every week. Man. All right. Well, Momo, thanks. Thanks again for walking the walk. Thank you, you Momo. A, you did a great job, and, and you're you're a shining example of this 
whether through morning or not, you were already walking the walk. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, put your comments below, and we will get back to you personally. Peace. Brothers in arms. Brothers in arms.